hold it. What's up, guys? This is Mike Loris, and I just lost all my frame right there. It is. Um, this is gonna be my first time going to holy fuck. What's up, guys? This is Mike Loris, and I'm going to be continuing my coverage of the defense by casting a game between Ubalist and Hydra. Uh, I was gonna just skip through a little bit of the band phase because you know we always see the same generic bands, but apparently this is the new CM. The patch just came out yesterday, and of course with that patch brought it the disruptor and the um, what's his face, uh, undying. But that will have to wait. Bands uh, going out from both teams currently, and the first band from Hydra, surprisingly being the Wisp, who just got added into the captain's mode. The Wisp is, um, I've only actually seen the Wisp being played once in a pro game. That was a game that Luminous casted, and it was some really wacky shit. Wisp tethered into the, tethered the Tiny, who had, like, Yasha, Zagadim, Scepter, a whole bunch of attack speed and damage, and they just backdoored the crap out of the other team. It was awesome. But, uh, other than that, Wisp has a pretty good damage with his spirits, and with that tether, you get a pretty good stun. It's not the most reliable stun, however. So I really question the Wisp being the first ban, uh, but I'm gonna trust in put my trust into Hydra, knowing that they don't want Ubalist to pick up that Wisp first. Maybe Ubalist has been seen streaming with the Wisp or something. Maybe they have a strat up their sleeve. But regardless, the Wisp is gonna be banned out this game in the first pick of Ubalist being that Invoker. Um, for Hydra though. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this, so I'm just gonna... Yeah, okay, so there we go. Picks are out from Hydra being the Chaos Knight and the Shadow Demon, both single target powerhouses, really. If you get a Disruption and a Soul Catcher into someone who's gonna be right-clicked by the Chaos Knight, that person is, like, 105% screwed, because Chaos Knight by himself does a ton of damage, and then if you add that plus 50% multiplier from Soul Catcher on top of that, yeah, they're gonna be pretty dead, especially since Ubalist's heroes, Enigma and Invoker, so far, not the tankiest of heroes, especially in the early game. Invoker is pretty durable, but that mostly comes out from regeneration. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna wait to see if there's any exciting picks, but in the meantime, uh, yesterday there was the patch. They introduced the Disruptor and the Undying, which I want to talk about that for a little bit. Oh, also, this is being live-streamed for the first time. It's like OwnTV slash Mike Loris. If you're here watching, then I love you. I'm giving you a heart right now, but I don't have a webcam set up, so you can't see it. Haha. <laughs> anyway, uh, Disruptor and the Undying. How this is going to change the meta, or the pro scene right now? Undying, going to have no impact. You might see him once or twice as a complete surprise pick, but really in Dota 1, he never got any uh, competitive play time ever, I don't believe. I don't think he's ever had a time to shine, really. There was a pre-remake Undying and a post-remake Undying. The post-remake Undying is, of course, the one that you would be semi-familiar with, having played against him in some of your games, I'm sure, in both Dota 1 and Dota 2. Pre-remake Undying was just a huge pusher guy. He just summoned zombies, and then they went and killed people. And his ultimate was pretty good, though. But anyway, uh, the Disruptor is going to be a lot more influential. As you see, uh, Leshrac coming out from Hydra. So Shadow Demon, Leshrac, pretty deadly dual lane. They could even tri-lane it with the uh, Chaos Knight. Morphling can be picked up by Ubalist. Morphling will give them that late game kind of insurance. And the bans coming out from Ubalist being the Queen of Pain, knowing that Hydra has picked up mostly, uh, predominantly side lane heroes, so they want to eliminate the really strong picks. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Beastmaster pick, uh, Beastmaster ban, I'm sorry, coming out from Ubalist. We have the Disruptor. The Disruptor actually has seen some playtime. If you watch Dota 1, you would see that Thrall guy being played occasionally, and it's pretty for, for pretty good reason that uh, I don't I've actually never played him before. But his giant AOE wall thing Radiant used for shutting down space is just something that you don't really see that often amongst Dota heroes. They, there's no one who could really shut down space, especially in this team. I mean, like there's stuns and that you have to avoid them, but that's pretty much it. I guess Black Hole is kind of like that, but uh, in a sense. The Disruptor is played similar to how Lina is played. Uh, Lina has a lot of nuking power, but she's also a support hero. And that is basically how Thrall is played. You play him as a support hero, use that Thunderstrike to just keep the enemies down, and just try to get some pressure going on that way. Of course, Glimpse is also extremely useful. I think you could teleport... If the people teleport in, you could just send them right back. 
I think I've seen that before, but again, I don't really know about enough about Disruptor to make any sort of claim. Anyway, the bans coming out from Ubalist didn't need to ban out the Beastmaster because Hydra banned out the Beastmaster. Kind of an interesting choice considering that Ubalist already had that long lane, or the potential long lane at least, in that Enigma, who you see, you know, kind of in the jungle in the long lane, kind of split in between the two, and they didn't need the mid lane. Coming, uh, they had a lot of mid lane power from that invoker. Picks that from Ubalist, going to be picking up the Windrunner. Get it, get themselves a little bit more stun. Uh, they didn't, they're not really exactly stun heavy at the moment. Of course, they do have Shackle Shot and Malphus and Cold Snap. So kind of like mini stuns galore, whereas Hydra has the real, you know, I'm going to just bam, chain stun the hell out of you with that Chaos Bolt and Split Earth. Of course, all of that being set up by the Disruption. And the ban action out from Hydra, eliminating the Earthshaker, so getting rid of that early game team fight. But of course, Ubalist still has the freedom to pick up someone like Sand King or the uh, Tidehunter, who serve similar roles to the Earthshaker. Earthshaker, in my opinion, is a little bit more defensive. Enchantress is going to be picked up by Hydra, so they have the jungle, now they just need someone to solo up, well, I don't know, maybe they're going to have a Leshrac solo and a CK Shadow Demon or something like that, but they need another lane regardless. I'm just going to take a quick peek. Oh, cool, one one viewer, that's me, actually. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Maybe I should post this on Reddit. That might actually not be a bad idea, but who cares? It's going to be good either way. It's all going to be recorded and put up somewhere. So, Ubalist's last pick was a Crystal Maiden. So they have the uh, four and one team set up. The four heroes being Invoker, Enigma, Windrunner, and CM. Going to be holding down the fort for the Morphling. Uh, they have quite a bit of early mid-game power. Morphling does have that waveform, which is very damaging. But Hydra, I would say with a little bit more early game power so far, we're going to see if they really solidify that with a, another early game pick. Brewmaster, perhaps. Might not be a bad idea to solve the mid lane. But, uh, yeah, Leshrac and Enchantress could demolish towers extremely, extremely quickly, so. Ubalists, with a decent amount of counter push, should be able to hold off somewhat against that. But, it's really going to remain to be seen. Hey, look! I'm right, Brewmaster being picked up by Hydra. Brewmaster might be soloing mid or might be going mid with some support as you have a little bit of frame rate lag. Come on, what's going on? Holy crap, this is bad. I don't like this. You're not supposed to be lagging on me. Um uh, maybe I have to shut down some things. Actually it seems to have cleared up. Whatever, I'll pause it later and shut down some more stuff. Should maybe turn off that live stream of myself if it gets out of control. But anyway into the game, we are going to see Team Hydra. We have Lua playing the Brewmaster, a stand-in fun playing the Lushrak, Demise on the Shadow Demon, Power Net on the Chaos Knight, and another stand-in uh, Sheep playing the Enchantress, who is a deer, so he got hooves being consistent. On the Ubalist team, we have Pass on the Windrunner, going to be going to that hard lane. Alex is going to be the Crystal Maiden. RMN is playing the Invoker, and Chill and Leaf going to be playing the Enigma and Morphling, respectively. Right now you have all of Hydra minus the Brewmaster heading down toward the bot lane. Uh, Brewmaster might be soloing up the top lane, actually. You're going to have a dual lane in the mid lane, most likely, but Hydra with really powerful early game heroes. Chaos Knight, Lashrac, and of course Enchantress, if she manages to grab a creep, is... By themselves could really do a lot of hurt, especially if Chaos Knight gets a two second stun, but they're not going to find anyone. Alex, with his Gosu senses, and my Gosu senses, I mean Ward, being able to spot in spot all of Hydra, so he's going to pull out of there. And another Ward going down from Lashrak, who's actually going to be playing a support Lashrak, looks like. Not really geared up for getting farm, and it might be Lashrak Chaos Knight with a solo mid Shadow Demon, so that's actually pretty cool. Tillamid Shadow Demon is pretty strong, actually. Uh, especially if you go Shadow Poison, which is usually what you see from Solomid Shadow Demons. Uh, Soul Catcher, of course, is always, always useful, but looks like the setup from Hydra is going to be a Brewmaster solo top with a Enchantress and the Shrak kind of dwelling around the bot lane, helping out the power net. 
and the bottom lane is going to be Leaf and Crystal Maiden, so Cast Knight is going to need a lot of help from this one. Because, of course, Morphling being a ranged hero is going to have that innate advantage. But then you get that second ranged hero on top of that, and Power Net is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Pass, picking up a Haste Rune, going to be up against uh, the Brewmaster as a Windrunner, and already the Brewmaster taking quite a bit of damage. Nothing really to do about that. Mid lane, it's going to be Invoker versus the Shadow Demons. I actually don't know what to make of this. Uh, I'm going to say the Invoker is going to have the edge, just because Invoker is such a dominant mid lane hero. And of course, even if he does get out last hit somehow, which he actually is getting last hit right, out last hit right now, even if he, that happens to him, then he's still going to have that global presence with the Sunstrike. He could still get set up by the Crystal Maiden, by a Shackle Shot, by a, hell, even an Enigma Stun if he times it correctly. So either way, the Invoker probably going to be in a little bit of a better position. See the Enchantress and Lashrak rotating into the bot lane, looking for something. And Enchantress did have a Centaur, but looks like they're just going to go and continue farming them Mud Golems, leaving Power Net to his own devices, 2-3 versus the 2-2 two -two of the Morphling. And Morphling, even though he's ranged, doesn't really have a lot of base damage compared to Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight's animation, really, really superb, plus his damage, and just makes it such an easy task to last hit the creeps and deny them as well. Morphling, although he does have that Crystal Maiden in support, uh, well, yeah, he does have that uh, Enigma too, but Enchantress and Lashrak a little bit more dangerous than a single s Crystal Maiden. And we have Sheep going to be warding off some of the Eidolons, actually going to be grabbing a Wildkin, so there might be a little bit of pressure going on to the bot lane. Tornado instantly being channeled as Frost Nova trying to push back the Enchantress, and the Sunstrike is going to hit, but it's actually going to be split between two people, so not the most damage coming out. Uh, they're going to be completely fine. Just going to use some of their tangos, maybe even a salve. And right there, we see one level of Shadow Poison being picked up by Shadow Demon. Shadow Poison is really what lets Shadow Demon be a good mid lane hero, since it's very hard to avoid, and it does fair, fair bit of damage. You don't really see it uh, often in pro games because uh, the Soul Catcher and Disruption is just so much more important for a supporter Shadow Demon. But since he's not going to be playing a support hero, he's free to get that Shadow Poison. 11 for 4 against 6 for 2, so actually doing quite a bit to outlane this Invoker. It's kind of surprising considering Invoker's base damage and range. I'm, I believe his range is 600 versus 600, should be. No, 600 versus 500, so I don't know what's going on with this Invoker. Maybe just like being a little bit distracted by the two very angry heroes by Hydra in his jungle. Sheep is going to pick up a third creep, but unfortunately he still has that Harpy, which doesn't really do much. It's, what, 140 damage? That's actually not that bad, but still I'd rather have a clap. It's a lot better. 150 damage and a slow. It's melee range, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. Let's see how the bot lane is going to go. Actually, no, let's not see how the bot lane is going to go as we see a push from Hydra going to be going onto the mid tier 1 tower. Sheep is using his Ursa and his Harpy, actually, to pretty good effect using that Chain Lightning to clear out the creeps. Something you don't see very often, but it's, hell, it's actually a pretty good combo. Oh, Ursa, Sunstruck, bam, poor guy. But a uh, level 1 Edict, doing a little bit of damage to the tower. Edict is never to be underestimated, even at level 1, it does a surprising amount of damage. Of course, it's always, like, a little bit disappointing, since you're expecting, like, a shit ton of damage, but you only get, like, a... I don't know, what's what's one unit less than shit ton? You get that much damage, but still doing quite a bit, bringing the tower down to 180 health. Sheep and the Shrak, fun. The two stand-ins looking for someone, they're going to find Ubalist's chill, and let's see what's going to happen. There's going to be a stun going off onto Enchantress, but she popped her heal beforehand, so they're not going to take much damage. Sunstrike can hit perfectly on the Enchantress, and RMN looking for something, but he doesn't have any invoke. He actually invoked Sun... No, he invoked Cold Snap, but he didn't cast it? He did cast it, but it didn't do anything, so... Not really sure what happened there. So, no first blood quite yet. Let's see, Leaf is farming 13 for 4 versus 17 for 8, so the farm advantage going the way of Hydra so far. And, yeah, you can see that in the gold and the experience graph. That Hydra's just getting more bang for their buck. 21 for 2. Even Brewmaster managing to stay on par with past the Windrunner. Something that's kind of surprising considering it's a melee hero versus a range hero and a windrunner no less. Even though Lua does have that safer lane, the creeps have been in this general area most of the time, so the safe lane really not making much of a difference. See a smoke now. 
for the Hydra team as the two stand-ins going to be circling around looking for the Invoker. Or maybe Yellow? No, they're actually going to be going right in for the Invoker who does have a point of Shadow Poison so he is spotted out. He's actually dropping items. You don't want to do that, man. Soulcatcher going out into the Invoker and stomps from the Enchanted Creeps. Split Earth mi actually missing but Shadow Demon with that last right click is going to be able to pick up First Blood and the Edict now doing a little bit of damage to the tower at Lashrak. Oh, you do not die there. 70 HP on the Lashrak and this tower is going to be taken down. Chill looking to do something with the deny, but he's a little bit too late. Shadow Poison going out, trying to spot for Chill. I think he saw him, but it didn't tag, so he's not going to have that. Actually, there it is. There's a vision on Chill, so Shadow Demon in hot pursuit, but he doesn't have any support, and the Morphling could easily come in and take him down. So, Oh, in the meantime, Invoker catching the tail end of that one pass, doing a little bit of dueling with the Invoker who got taken... Uh, dueling with the Brewmaster who actually got ta taken down by the Invoker with the Sunstrike. So that's what I was saying before. Even if the Invoker gets shut down really hard, which he is, like, brutally hard, uh, he still has that Global Presence, so he is going to have that income stream. And really, look, the Shadow Demon's put in the work on the Invoker. 9 for 2 versus 32 for 9? That's outrageous lane control. That's... It's pretty much unheard of Invoker getting out lane that hard. And by a Shadow Demon of all people, it kind of makes you wonder, why don't we see Shadow Demon more often in the mid lane? Of course, his support role, I feel like his support role is stellar. And mid lane could easily be filled in by uh, Queen of Pain, Beastmaster, or Storm Spirit, or similar heroes of that nature. And in that case, I guess Shadow Demon does kind of pale in comparison. But, hell, sometimes you just need that Shadow Poison, the damaging Shadow, Fiend, Shadow Demon build, I'm sorry. And it's doing a lot of good work. You now see Hydra with that ganking party of the Lashrak, Enchantress, and the CK. Going to be looking for someone, but they're actually going to be spotted out by the Enigma. So no surprises here. Let's see if he could, they can make something happen regardless. It's going to be a slow... Oh my god, Soulcatcher on chill. And a four-second stun from the Chaos Knight. Sunshine completely missed. Actually, no, it hit Enchantress, but it's not going to really matter. Alex, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Reality Rift going down, pulling him back, and the Shadow Poison goes off. And as, as well as the Edict. Morphling is forced away from him. He's actually going to get a kill on the Enchantress, so good pick up by Morphling. Power net is extremely weak. He is cold snap, so he's taking a lot of damage from this Invoker. Is he going to go down? Yes, he's going to go down. Invoker's going to get the last right click. Demise is going to eat his way through the trees, and the stand-in fund is going to walk out as well. So it currently sits at 3-3. Three to three. Should do a little bit for Ubalus as far as the... Yeah, their experience earned is going to be a little bit more slighted towards them. But unfortunately for Ubalus, they have lost that mid tower pretty early, which usually lose side towers before you lose the mid tower. Something going on with the Invoker in that mid lane, but hell, who am I to judge? That is going to put Hydratic Gold advantage to Demise, getting cold snapped and frost, and obviously taking a lot of damage. Actually, in a free no disruption on himself, avoiding the sunstrike damage. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough. He's going to need a miracle right here. He's actually trying to juke out with his illusions, but. Not going to be fooled, Ubalus Alex taking the right click and Leaf picking up a tower on the bot lane. So, with those range supports, they managed to push out, push the Chaos Knight. Leaf is doing a little bit, actually, with the denies, it's pretty much a wash in the bot lane as far as the late game damage dealers go. Chaos Knight, however, is two for one, Morphling one for one, so take that with a grain of salt. Morphling is in a lot of trouble right now. He does not know it though. There's Two stand-ins smoked up, and Morphling going to be actually be taking the safe way out, so lucky him. Now see Lishrak going to be going for this Enigma. Is he going to land his Split Earth, though? He's, there's a cancel on Split Earth, trying to do some mind games, uh, but the Eidolons now turned around. Going to be doing quite a bit of damage to Lishrak. He's forced to use Split Earth to get rid of them, and this is going to mean a little bit more farm for Enchantress. Going to help her a little bit towards something like Arcane Boots, or even more Wards, or Smoke, or something. They're actually using Smoke quite a lot. It benefited them... A little bit, they got an invoker kill, but that's about it as far as smokes go, I believe. Leaf with that perseverance, gonna be going for a Lincoln Sphere most likely. That'll help him quite a bit. CK stun, disruption, uh, yeah, and really, that if you're gonna block that, then hell, it's worth it. You now see demise poised for a gank onto pass. Pass has no idea what's happening. But I don't think it's going to... Well, it might work. There goes the Demonic Purge and the Soul Catcher as we see the Shack getting taken down. Instant teleport in from the Invokers. Lua is going to clap and is going to use the split. Pass is going to take a lot of damage. Two stacks of Shadow Poison. He's going to be taken down. And the Invoker as well. In teleporting in just for a cold snap. Not doing much of else. But in the meantime, the Enchantress was taken down by the... Well, Ubalus team. 
on the bot lane, Leaf. Oh, you lucky devil, you. Actually, I'm pretty sure you just morphed all that away, so he probably was at low health, but managing to pick up two kills regardless is now Ubalist pushing down onto the bot tier 2 of Hydra. Three second stun going out on the fake Enigma, unfortunately, so nothing going to come out of that necessarily. Lua on the top lane is going to be able to take down this tower. Let's see if he gets their last click. Click it. There you go. Brewmaster taking a tower of his own. 600, 700 away from his... Blink Dagger, although you don't always see pandas go Blink Dagger. The initiation from Hydra is actually pretty good with the CK and the uh, Shadow Demon. We now see Demise looking for someone. Alice gets purged, and he's going to take a Soul Catcher. He's going to take a lot of damage. Four seconds stun as well. You are so dead. Pop goes the Crystal Maiden, but we have Fun going to be taking a lot of damage as well. What the hell is that curved Shackle Shot? Lestrax is going to be taken down by the Morphling. Power Net is going to hide in with Sheep in the jungle. But he's going to actually Phantasm and try to juke them out a little bit. And... Four seconds stun going off on chill, but he is all alone. Actually, what the hell was that? That was a failed reality rift? That was extremely weird. Like, the animation went off, but no one got pulled, so I don't know what happened there. But regardless, CK going down, which is going to put the advantage a little bit more in Ubalist's favor as far as experience goes. Unfortunately, they're still behind on towers, so that gold advantage is going to be held firmly by Hydra. Who are now uh, one tower ahead, actually. Looking to be zero towers ahead as the tier 2 on the bot lane gets pressured. Shadow Poison going out. Going to be doing a lot actually to ward away this push, but regardless, the Radiant does pick up that tower and they're instantly going to fall back, so not going to be looking for a fight. They do have a black hole, however. So if they do take a fight, it's well, they'll actually be pretty strong in a fight. Of course, the cooldowns from Hydra are fairly low on everyone except for that Brewmaster who used it. What was that? Was that on the top lane? Did he use it since then? I feel like that's the last time he used it, but... Hell, he got a kill and a half out of it, so... Totally worth it as far as that goes. And Ubalist doing a pretty good job of sheltering their Morphling, giving him a complete lane of no towers, so... Teleport support is going to be extremely slow if, if the Morphling decides to go onto the less track. And the Shadow Demon... Just doing work with that four levels of shadow poison it's a lot of damage leaf now going on to power nap power not getting a four second stun he's actually going to fall back leaving hit leaf in this stunned animation that well it's like no shit he's in the stunned animation he's stunned for four seconds but he's going to leave him alone he's not going to win a, a right click battle with the morphling especially since morphling has a lot more sustain with that perseverance so ck is going for a drum which is more or less standard on ck he's getting played very aggressively by Leaf. Leaf does not have a replicant, however, and he's going to get ganked up by all of the Ubl Hydra side. Sunstrike uh, is going to be going in onto Power Net. Might Leaf get the kill? He's actually uh, phasing out all of his mana. The Shack going to be able to take the kill on the Morphling, and I meant morphing out all his mana. So if he didn't morph at all, he might have gotten a kill, but he also would have died. Well, he died regardless, so kind of morphing away his mana and cost him a kill. We actually have a Blink Dagger on on Lua right now. Brewmaster kind of on that fr free farm top lane. And Windrunner, uh, she kept par with the Brewmaster, but she didn't do much to actually completely shut him down. And they were pretty much up there all alone. So uh, fast Blink Dagger, 13 minutes. going to be extremely deadly for Ubalus. They're going to have to watch out for that long range initiation. And especially with Blink clap and split, and then you have the angry CK with a lot of illusions. It's just not going to be pleasant. CK actually took his ultimate pretty early. You usually don't see it until after both his Q and W are maxed out. And then you usually see two points of Phantasm right back, get that extra illusion going. And that just has so much difference. Chaos Knight going to be taking down the tower, so another tower going the way of Hydra. And they're going to be teleporting into the mid lane, try to defend their tower of their own, and in the meantime, pass, also on the top lane, doing his own thing. And that was a four staff, so a pretty big farm coming up in the Windrunner as well. Let's just take a look at the experience advantage. I'm pretty sure it should be in the way of Ubalist, that is correct, but the gold advantage, actually still in the way of Ubalist. Yeah, those kills really going to rack up quite a difference for them. And, let's see, three towers, two towers down, actually, with uh, three from Hydra. So Hydra is one tower in the advantage right now, but actually not that big. Who paused? Of course they're ready. Aren't you supposed to tell people to pause or like ask, do the PP kind of thing? 
I don't know. That's that's what I think. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a pro player, so I've actually been reading a lot of stuff about how Ooh. pro players like are really freaking unprofessional. Uh, it's all like on Reddit and stuff like that, and yeah, I can understand it. I mean, like you're playing in a tournament game, and even though this is the group stages, you kind of want to have your whole team, everyone with that Hydra tag on, if, like, you have stand-ins, but if you do this for a living, you should be able to make games. I don't know. I don't know, man. Could be anything. Shadow Demon now with a mech. So, using that early level and experience, uh, and gold advantage, I'm sorry, to kind of get himself a couple kills, and he's going to be sliding back into that support role. I don't think you would see anything else from a Shadow Demon. You might see, like, four Staff or stuff like that, but Mech, a lot more important. Pretty early as well, 15 minutes into the game, they have a Mech and a Blink Dagger, so their team fight coming out from Hydra is going to be pretty devastating, assuming they don't all blink into a Enigma Black Hole, which is going to completely ruin their day. CK now with that drum and three members smoked up. They're going to be looking to take either a pick-off or a tower or both. They do have a Wildkin, who's going to be an annoying little bastard. Using the tornado, which is such a pain in the ass. It's gonna be a little bit more bearable since it's 15 minutes into the game. But really, no matter when, that tornado is just such a great skill. Because it gives vision. And it's annoying. And did I mention it's annoying? It's. yeah, that's. it's true. Lua playing a little bit forward, and Lashrak pausing again. What is with all these pauses? Chill gonna be casting some Eidolons. Or giving someone a hug. I don't know. Could be anything. But Lua, he wants to go in on this. You see, you can even see Power Net and Demise circling around the trees. They're looking to go in. They just need to blink, clap, and split from the Brewmaster. Probably going to be going to the, going onto the Enigma. If they if Brewmaster splits and then rocks the Enigma, then uh, they could just use a what you call it, Chaos Bolt. Keep the Enigma stunned and. Oh, that's not fun. Yeah, Toby Wan, you tell him. But yeah, Blink, Clap, Split, Chaos Bolt, Enigma's pretty much toast. He is going for a mech himself, but he is 800 gold behind the Shadow Demon. Who does have it, and with so much power coming out from the higher team. There we go. This is what we need. This is what Dota needs. Someone actually laying down the law. Unfortunately, I don't think they're actually going to lay down ban hammers, disqualifications, and such like that. But, uh, yeah. So Enigma could be very easy to take down. Although he does have a Force Staff, so he manages, if he manages to turn around before any of that happens, Winrunner can just Force Staff his teammate to safety and see him waiting in the wings with a Crystal Nova. Unfortunately for Ubalist, however, Leaf, nowhere to be found. He's on the bot lane, so it's going to be a 5v4, unless a Teleport comes in and Toby Wan just laying down the law. This is... how are you just, like, not here? I don't know what's going on. But here we go, we're going to see the action resuming. Lua actually getting his Blink Dagger cancelled, so the fight going to be delayed for a little bit more, and those Eidolons and Forge Spirits really not making it worth his while to stick around and blink in, because he can't do that. Yes, there you go. You tell him, Ham Sandwich, you tell him. Power Net being forced by Teal to teleport back and I think Demise and Fun just gonna be sticking around a little bit trying to do a little bit of harassment to slow their push the retaliation push down a little bit they gotta be careful because there's a four staff and they're right near some trees right now they also have to make sure not to stack up so they don't get shackled together which will be completely horrible for the Hydra team they're gonna be defending this mid tower which doesn't have a lot of life left it's unfortunately on life support and Looks like they're going to have to be forced to pull the plug relatively soon. As the Windrunner Invoker, Shackle Shot, not going to latch on Demise, but just a couple of right clicks on that tower. Going to be taking it down. Actually, Demise purging off Windrunner. He's going to be going for a little bit of damage, but he's, he goes a little bit too far. Our men just going to make him pay. Tower is in deny range. Looks like Hydra should be doing that right now. Yes, they are. Who's going to deny it? Shadow Demon denies the tower. tower. Of course, that doesn't matter, but hell. You always should add action when there's action. 
even if there's no action, just keep adding action. Uh, Lua going up against Leaf. Lua is not in a very good position, but Leaf doesn't look like he wants to push this fight. He's just going to be content with taking down the tower, even though it was denied by the Brewmaster. So good play by the Brewmaster, although with so much... Oh yeah, you can't really last hit when you have no agility, so it's kind of difficult. If you do manage that, then you are some sort of pro player. Yeah. But uh, 85 damage, a lot easier to last hit a tower with, especially when it has so much armor. But that's going to be four towers t being taken down by Ubelist and only losing three towers of their own. So the experience and gold. Yeah, climbing in the way of Ubelist. Stand in, uh, I'm sorry, Hydra. I just looked at the tag, I'm like, yeah, it's not a team. Hydra, still not out of it by any means. They are behind, but Morphling doesn't really have all that much. He doesn't have a Lincoln Sphere yet, and he just needs some room to farm, which currently there is not much of. He's going to be looking around, going to find that Enchantress, and possibly spot the Leshrac, but he's not going to go on this. He doesn't have the power to do it. Actually, Sunstrike going to narrowly miss, so Sheep knows something is up. Actually going to be receiving an urn from a courier. Leaf still invisible, looking for something. Although Pink going to get ganked up. Frostbitten and in the middle of two heroes. Disruption on himself. Let's see what he's going to do. Trying to purge off Chill, I believe. Yes, but we see a bl huge black hole by Chill. Catching Power Net Demise and Lua being pulled in. But there's just simply no damage. The split goes off Chill. Getting a three second Chaos Bolt and a rock going off onto Alex. Reality is going to pull him back in a huge crit. 363 going to be taking him down. Is there going to be anyone else to fall? No, Yellow is going to be able to teleport away. So Hydra taking two easy kills right there. And Morphling actually managing to solo kill the Shrak. Was that a Sun Strike involved? There wasn't. So Lashrak. Well, Lashrak is only level 6 and he doesn't have shit. So Morphling with a level 12. There's a lot of power coming out from him in comparison, and really, what are you going to do as a Shrak, trying to get some levels up in the top lane, and all of a sudden, water everywhere, and you have no lightning to cast into that water, because then that would be super effective, but you don't have it, so you're just going to die. Wow, lots of crits coming out from Hydra team. Team crit, Brewmaster Chaos Knight, you now see the Phantasm going to be going out, trying to bring this tower down a little bit more, Invoker, you got to be extremely careful if you get Chaos Bolt or Blinked Upon. You're going to be in a lot of danger. Sunstrike going to be going out, not hitting anyone. Blink forward by the panda, hitting three people in the clap. Power Knight now going to land a four-second stun onto Alex. Alex is going to be in a lot of trouble. Reality Rift as well. Going to be taken down by a huge critical, but a shackle shot onto Lua and Demise is going to be locked out of this fight for a little bit. Corey just in the middle of everything for some reason as Hydra, content with that one kill, going to be pulling back. They don't want to push their advantage. They don't have Demonic Purge. They don't have Split. And But Pass knows that that's not down. Shock Shot's going to be lashed onto Sheep. But we have Power Net coming back in with three seconds stun onto RMN. RMN's going to be getting down by the Brewmaster. And Sheep is actually still alive. Chill's going to try to teleport out of here. But the crits, are they going to be enough? No. No huge lucky crits coming out from the Chaos Knight. Pass is still on the run, but Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon actually going to cast that disruption and more Shadow Poison stacks. So Pass is going to be Reality Rift backwards and going to take a clap and a lot of crits. Two seconds stun going on to Pass as a double kill for the Brewmaster. Hydra just picking up so many kills despite being behind and now I'm pretty sure the advantage is in their favor or at least nullified. Yeah, the experience and gold dropping down to, t to that zero mark as, as Hydra taking out a tower and then cleaning up a whole bunch of kills for free. They didn't I'm pretty sure they didn't pay for anyone's life except for Lashrac on the top lane. So Hydra playing extremely well using that early game power of Chaos Knight and Brewmaster who unfortunately for Ubelists that power will stick around if Chaos Knight gets some more items up. Looks like he's going for a BKB. Maybe might be a Sanchinyasha. But uh most likely a BKB can allow him some Im damage with impunity as you see big 205 crits coming out. Lots of crits actually from the Hydra team and that right click damage you know yeah you hear people say oh the right click damage isn't very influential in the early stages of the game well if you land a crit like that occasionally then it's yeah, it's, it's gonna hurt especially when it's jacked up by the reality rift bonus Dyer's damage Chaos Knight just doing a lot of damage and honestly I haven't seen many successful Chaos Knights recently whenever Chaos Knight has been picked kind of been sh shut down by the enemy team, which is unfortunate since Chaos Knight is such an amazing character. Uh, he's such a really fun hero to watch as well. And in Dota 1, pretty much top tier material. You see CKAA lanes doing quite a bit of work on the other team. CKAA, I maintain, is the strongest game in the lane, but game... What the fuck? Game in the lane? Lane in the game. But, yeah, 
it, if you know what you're doing, you could shut it down. You should have to play a little more aggressive than they are. And CK, he's going to be forced to go in on a lane like that. So, But enough about something that's not in this game right now. Power and Demise is going to be putting... Just dwelling in the mid lane a little bit. Looks like Hydra might be going for a Roshan. They are going to be spotted if they do so. But they do have quite a bit of damage. Actually, not really. They have an Ogre Magi, which is going to help them tank up Roshan a little bit. The damage mostly going to be coming out from the CK. Wilkin going to be helping a little bit. We now see Lashrak coming in, but all of Ubalist is converging onto their position. So they're going to have to be extremely careful. Ubalist is smoked as well. See if there's going to be a Sunstrike to open it up and try to force them out of the Roche pit, but I don't think that's going to happen. Pass looking for a Shack Shot. He is going to find Demise, who is actually going to get disrupted immediately. Split Earth as well, going to be locking Pass out for the majority of this fight, but oh no, Sheep, what are you doing there? Huge CM Ultimate going to be dropped down as Enchantress gets taken down. Four seconds stun onto Chill, so no black hole for this fight. Power Shot going to be latching out Demise, and who's going to be right clicked by Leaf? Power Net going after RMN, and the Panda Split. Uh, Split Broodling's going to be going after the Windrunner. Windrunner is going to be going down as Demise still playing with that Morphling. Uh, Power Net actually going to bring back Crystal Maiden for some huge damage with those Phantasm Illusions. Leaf making illusions of illusions, and there's illusions everywhere. And looks like that's going to be the end of the fight. Three for one in favor of Hydra. That Enigma just getting completely demolished. That three second stun and then reality rift, just so much damage coming out from him. Disruption going off onto the Morphling. Morphling should be fine, however, he does have a waveform. He's going to take a lot of right click damage, he's going to wait for him over the trees, and he's not going to be able to get a like, Chaos bolted. So lucky for him, he's going to get out of this one alive. CK now with that BKB versus the Morphling with only a Lincoln Sphere. Morphling not having the best farm of his life. He's getting a lot of time, but he doesn't. I feel like he doesn't have a whole lot to reflect that, of course. It is 24 minutes in. But, you know, when you have a Brewmaster with a Blink Dagger, Perseverance, and stuff like that, it's a lot of a lot of raw money coming out from the Hydra team, who now the ex gold earned, sitting perfectly at zero experience earned with that five kills, going to be dipping down into Hydra's favor, as you would expect from a five kill advantage. Looks like they might be going in for Oshan again, and this time the wards have timed out. I don't think they know that they've timed out. Shadow Demon is going to find Alex, and there goes another ward. He's going to see fun. So they're all going to know that Roshan is going to be taken down, or at least tried to be taken down by Hydra. Let's see if they're going to contest this. They still have that black hole that was not used the last fight, and Chaos Knight, no ultimate. Uh, Brewmaster, no ultimate. Sunshine is going to be going on to Power Net. He's going to take a lot of damage. Shackled to a tree, actually. He can take a lot of damage from Roshan, of all things. As we now see an army of illusions and forge spirits going to be doing a lot of right click damage to Power Net. Deafening Blast going to push them out. Disruption onto the Invoker, but it's not going to be a huge deal. Lua blinking in, looking for a clap. Fortunately, the clap is not there. He's going to settle for clearing out some of the summons, and that is going to be it. Roshan lives to fight another day. In the meantime, Leaf on the top lane. Did he have a replicant? I don't think he had a replicant, so he was not going to be joining that fight regardless. Taking down a tower in the free in the free time that he had. So Ubalus doing what they can to keep that onto that gold advantage. Morphling now has that Ghost Scepter, which... I don't know, it's going to be good against the Shrak, who doesn't have much. He actually has a cloak, so it's going to be a little bit less than effective. Brewmaster actually going for a Battle Fury. That's something you don't see every day. Normally, that Ogre Axe will be turned into a, um, whatchamacallit, Aghanim Scepter, but picking up that Perseverance into Battle Fury, they just want a lot of right-click damage. And usually you don't really see that, since it's usually all just about the split. You blink in, clap, split, and then the fight is over. Either you win or you lose, and then... That's it, you don't really stick around for the right clicks. But with Drunken Brawler, you could be doing quite a bit of damage. Of course, the cleave not going to really be helping him farm all that much, since the farming period's almost over. It's going to be a useful to take out those Eidolons, going to be taking out those Forge Spirits, so... Still not a complete waste of money, as we now see. Round 3, fight. So far, it's been uh, one in favor of Ubalus, one in favor of Hydra as far as this Roshan goes, but Roshan still pissed. Sunstrike going off onto nothing. Demise actually cold snap, taking a lot of damage from Pass. Pass actually gets, uh, yeah, Reality Rift onto the low ground. Black Hole onto Sheep and the Lashrak, but there's no damage coming out. Invoker taking out Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon taking out Invoker. Power Net with that BKB is just going to town onto Alex, the Crystal Maiden. So looks like Fun is going to be taking down as well. He has a negative earn charge. Just one more right click from Pass, but actually you're going to juke into the forest. The right click is going to be there. Brulings are going to go to work on Chill, who is going to get taken down. Rock onto Pass. 
Power Knight is shackled to something, or Melee Creep of all things. Leaf waveforming in is going to get Cyclone out of the fight immediately, and Lua is looking for Pass, who's actually going to be able to do it. One right click, two right clicks, is going to be take, able to take him out. Brewmaster with a double kill now, trying to get out of this fight. He doesn't have much, though, and this is why you don't get Battle Fury on the Brewmaster, because you just get so, so easily kited. The only one to survive from that fight is Leaf. Black Hole from the Enigma, not really being used as a damaging tool. Like, I'm going to black hole these guys and they're going to die by the time the AoE ends. Just holding out two people from the fight. And those were a couple of valuable seconds where there was no stuns, there was no impetus flying, and really they kind of needed that Hydra because they got cleaned up without it. Leaf picking up that Aegis and has an Ethereal Blade. Oh, Demise, you are in so much trouble. Actually going to live with just a little bit of health. Uh, using that disruption to cancel off the Aegis, and is there going to be a Split Earth? Split Earth on Leaf taking a lot of damage from Soul Catcher as well as Diabolic Edict. Is he going to get out of this? No, the Aegis is going to be popped. I don't think. Oh, actually, with Power Net coming back in, he just needs a single Chaos Bolt. No, Leaf is going to. Oh no, Reality Rift back onto the high ground. Three seconds stun onto Leaf, and this Chain Stun is going to continue. Demise with that Soul Catcher onto Leaf going to be doing so much damage. Reality Rift is going to be able to take down Morphling with a dominating streak being broken by the Chaos Knight. Very huge two kills being picked up by Hydra. They Morphling now does not have buyback. He wasted his entire combo on a Shadow Demon who managed to survive and is somehow well bottle and mech and magic stick. Gonna be able to sit at full health, not even taken down by that combo of the Morphling. So just a really huge two kills and those reality rifts have been pretty insane actually. Cast casting reality from uh, down the Roche pit, bringing in uh, the Windrunner back down there forcing her out of position and then once again bring the morphling from right here up onto the high ground so reality rift certainly is a wacky spell but hell it's wacky and extremely powerful so it's a pretty deadly combo right there so hydra retaliating with that stolen roche which really should have been there but ubalist making sure that they did not get what they want actually took the roche on but unfortunately did not make anything happen with that Warfling just getting completely beaten down by the Hydra team. Perfect timing for Power Net to come in as well, right as the Aegis popped. Whew. Looks like Invoker actually picked up a four staff and drum. Uh, let's actually do a quick item check. That's not the item button. This is the item button. The blade is up on Morphling. Unfortunately for him, Shadow Demon with that level 14. Pretty high level actually, so he's gonna be extremely durable. Enchantress and Lestrac. Really going to be the only ones he could snipe down from 100 to 0, I feel. Uh, Enchantress sitting at... Well, they're both fairly durable, actually, but... Yeah, they're still not going to be able to withstand that much damage from the Morphling. Four Staff, Mech on the Enigma. Going to be building towards the BKB, so double Four Staffs from Ubalist and... BKB incoming. We see a Waveform combo onto Fun, who instantly gets disrupted. Chant going off to the Morphling, Morphling getting out. I don't know if I'm going to take a Sunstrike. Perfect Sunstrike onto Lashrak. This Invoker. Map hack. No, he's not. not. I'm, just, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm, I'm just kidding, but spot on with that Sunstrike. Really perfectly done. Getting a nice easy snipe, even though he did not manage to get the kill with the entire combo. He got the kill for his team, and that's what's important, because it's a team game. Now see Brewmaster trying to take down some dragons, get a blink away and teleport out, so not going to be closed up upon by the Ubalist team. Brewmaster is going to get at him. I really want to know what the next item is going to be. Is he going to continue with this right-click panda, which you see more often in pubs than in these real serious games? Or is he going to go for that Aghanim Scepter, which is a little bit more standard? Like, he already has that Battle Fury and doesn't do anything when you split. And he has a Ogre Club, which could either be built towards a BKB, or it could be built towards an Aghanim Scepter. Uh, I'm personally more in favor of Aghanim Scepter just because it's such a standard and brutal item, but... Hell, right-click Brewmaster might be the next meta. Chaos Knight picking up a Reaver. So he's going to be extremely beefy, sitting at 2300 HP. Shotgun not going to be doing a whole much to bring him down. Still doing a lot of damage, since he doesn't have any magic resist, but... He's going to be durable enough to withstand it. See if that's going to be a Satanic or a Heart. Most likely going to be a Heart to stay on the front lines, make those illusions a lot more deadly. Because you just can't kill them. Invulnerable illusions, that shit's powerful. 
And also, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, something with the illusions. I just completely lost my train of thought. Yeah, yeah, the illusions already have a lot of damage because of the crit. Illusions do crit. The numbers, I'm not sure if they lie anymore. They used to lie and just tell you what they would crit. Well, actually, no, they have full damage. So, they, yeah, the crit's going to be doing full damage. So, Chaos Knight not necessarily needing to buy a whole lot of damage items. Going for the more sustained health route is going to allow his illusions to stick around a lot more and just keep wailing on them instead of... Go yeah, instead of going for burst illusions with that reality rift and just taking someone down in one swipe, going to be going for the more sustained, more chaotic team fight. And if you're a Chaos Knight, you want that chaos, and that's one way to do it. Changes his creeps now. Going to be holding off the creep wave a little bit. We see Power Net circling around. The entirety of Ubalist is on the bot lane, minus the Invoker and the CM, but there it's not going to be enough. We see Yellow teleporting in. All of Hydra looking for someone. They're not going to find anyone. They might find Orange, actually. Chill, you got to get out of there. Power Net. Don't know what he's doing, but looking for someone who's not there. Lua. Now looking to go in, picking up that Assault Caress, which is going to help his Brewlings just a little bit, but not the same as Agnes after Blink, Clap, and into a Primal Split, but Force Staff and RMN is going to be going to Ghostwalk. Is there any vision? No, there is not. So, kind of a wasted split so far. Leaf getting chain stunned a little bit. Uh, going to waveform away and shotgun that Lashrak. So, Lashrak is out of this fight. Net looking for a kill onto Leaf, but Leaf still in that ethereal form, not going to be able to do anything. And Demise is going to be locked out of this fight. Reality Rift onto Leaf. Huge crits going down. Uh, Alex is dropping his ultimate, but it's not doing that much damage to see. Two seconds stun going up onto Chills. Chills is probably going to be taken down by an Impetus. Yes, he is going to. Morphling is going to buy back into this game. If someone is dropped, that is going to be the Invoker. He's going to take... No, the Soul Catcher actually goes onto a, ra a creep, unfortunately, for them. Demise going to be taking a lot of damage. He's going to go down to the Morphling. Sunstrike going to be hitting perfectly on Lua. Lua is on the run. No, gonna, uh, no blink dagger for him as Sheep trying to, to run out of this. Is there going to be anything? No. The Adaptive Strike, just uh, like a couple milliseconds off of the cooldown. And that's going to mean a two for one trade. Actually, it was a little bit more than two for one. Uh, Morphling bought back into the game. How many buybacks were there? Oh, just one. Oh, you could see now. That's that's nice of them. The chance just bought back. No, that's the that's the ultimate. I'm pretty sure the new patch added something with buyback. You could see it, but I'm not sure. I can't see it. I know Morphling bought back, and I don't see anything there. But whatever. Uh, let's. Yeah, the gold advantage, Ubalist holding strong, that ethereal blade doing a lot of damage towards Hydra, just eliminating the Shadow Demon, eliminating the Lashrak, and once you get rid of that, then a lot of that sustained magical damage from both of those heroes, actually, going to be eliminated extremely quickly as now Ubalist, oh my god, Alacrity, more playing that shit's deadly, going to be pushing down into the mid lane, double split earth, see if they're going to go in on this, power net looking towards it, maybe? Uh, not going to be going for it. Morphling going to be taking down that mid tower. Hydra needs to do something. Reality Rift actually canceling out the Lincoln Sphere. Three seconds on going to Leaf as Lua blinks in. BKB popped by the Cast Knight doing right clicks on Leaf, but Leaf with that strength more just too much health. And he's actually, they're actually going to keep trying, but a black hole on three. Black hole on Lua, Power Net, and Sheep. Going to be take, taking them out of the fight. Lua does not have a split, unfortunately, but he does have the Battle Fury. He's going to be using right click damage. Four seconds on Chill. Chill is going to be taking down, but no. Deafening Blast slowing down Chaos Knight, but Chill looking to get out, but he's not going to be able to. Demise in the middle of two heroes with fun, and he's, they're looking for pass. Actually going to be going for that Invoker kill. Invoker, actually they split themselves up between pass and the Invoker, and looks like they're both going to get away. So my, a little bit of miscommunication coming out from Hydra. But they did manage to take out the Enigma. They did manage to take out the CM, and I'm pretty sure no one died from the Hydra team. So managing to defend their racks, but uh, Leaf, I'm pretty sure, got away. Leaf had to have gotten away. He's still alive, and he doesn't have a buyback. Leaf now sitting on that Yasha. Going to be going for Amanda style, and once he has that, it's going to be a lot of hurt coming on to Team Hydra. As, yeah, the heart going to be picked up by the Chaos Knight. So he's now extremely durable, sitting at 3,100 HP. Very, very difficult to be taken down. But the rest of his team, not as durable. Saw Panda being right-clicked pretty hard. He's sitting at low health for most of that fight. And the rest of his team, of course, being squishy intelligence heroes. Not going to be able to withstand the Morphling. So Ubalist, if they play their cards right, could eliminate everyone except for the Chaos Knight and then just wail on him last. But we're going to see what happens, actually. Enigma picking up that blink dagger, uh, not blink dagger, the BKB, so 
no more three second stuns on him. He's just gonna be able to get that BKB that um BKB ult off with impunity, although he actually kind of already has. I don't think his black hole has been interrupted once. He managed to get the full duration off. It's not the most damaging of ultimates because his, the rest of his team wasn't really there to follow up on that. But he got it off, helped three people out of the fight, while well, it gave his team a little bit of right click freedom. And Shadow Demon rolling in the dough, picking up a scythe of vise. How often do you see that? Shadow Demon with Hex Stick. Enchantress is going to be going for that Aghanim Scepter, and Brewmaster is still sitting on his mystery build. Really want to know what he's doing with this. He just doesn't have a plate mail, but he also has that Ogre Club, and that doesn't build into anything, so. Brewmaster currently being a mystery panda. He does have 2,000. He might be going for a Kuras. Might be going for an Aghanims. I don't know. If he goes for Kuras, it'll definitely help Chaos Knight quite a bit. Get that minus armor on the enemy team, making those crits hurt that much more. But looks like Ubalus now gonna be smoking up looking for a pick off. Sheepstick is up on Windrunner and is up on Invoker as well, so they could just lock someone out of the fight and Brewmaster with his right click build. Doesn't matter how hard you can right click, if you can't right click, he's actually gonna be running into the entirety of Ubalus. Oh my god, Brewmaster actually what? They're gonna go for Lashrak instead. So lucky Brewmaster gets to escape with his life. Lashrak Gonna be taking down Nublis, looking for the sure kill. Brewmaster is did get hexed, but they had to chain off his stuns pretty much perfectly, or else he could just primal split and walk out of there. Or you know, at least in theory, I don't think he could have actually done that though. There's too much damage coming out from Ubalist. Roshan now is up, and whoever gets the next Roshan really will determine the pace of the game to uh, in the minutes to come. It's like it's not going to be actually no let's get rid of that I didn't mean to click on that stop that not going to be a fight Roshan not yet at least Shadow Poison continuing to go out and with that sight the Vise he cast that all day looks like Ubalus content to just go and farm the more their Morphling gets beefy the more trouble it's going to be for Hydra and Morphling with that replicate can choose to take. Uh, Chaos Knight Illusion, which will be completely devastating. So much HP on those illusions and the crit. So Morphling ideally would like to have that, but Chaos Knight does have a BKB, so timing's got to be there. Shout even the double damage rune. Right clicking, actually doing a little bit of pulling. Not really. Well, maybe pulling for the Brewmaster. Would that be a uh, Battle Fury? Smoke up again on Team Ubalus, looking for someone. They know that someone's around this area, and it is pink, and he might be in a little bit of danger, but he does have a lot of support. Ubalus is going to be going into the jungle as they find Demise. Who's going to get the sheep off first? Demise is going to get sheeped, and he's going to be taken down. Lots of right-click damage. Actually, no, Cycloning from a Tornado. Black Hole onto just Lua, however, as we see PowerNet skirting around the edges. But he's going to get caught as well. Lua is going to get taken down, so no split from him. PowerNet is BKB'd, and he's going to be able to take down Invoker, and he's going to try to do what else he can. But Leaf in the back, getting a double kill on the Lashrak and the... Uh, uh, the Shadow Demon, sorry. Lua now blink, uh, buying back Blink and Clap. Going to be going on to Alex, the Crystal Maiden. As you see the uh, illusions by Chaos Knight. Still doing quite a bit of damage. Storm Panda chasing after Alex as Power Net. Did manage to get it alive. Alex taking a lot of damage from that Fire Panda. Brewmaster is going to be able to take down that kill. However, he's timing out on his ultimate. So he's going to have to get out of there. Earth Panda running out of time. There he is. But an instant blink away from Lua. So that was a buyback. And a... 3 for 2, so either way, that fight going the way of Ubalist as Morphling was just in the back doing work, and this is probably going to mean Rax. I don't think they could defend with only 3 people as a shotgun combo going out to Power Net, dealing quite a bit of damage, but he's going to be fine with that heart. But regardless, Ubalist is going to be taking down a Rax. See a blink clap from Lua, trying to slow Leaf down a little bit, but it might not be enough. Chill going to take a 3 second stun, but he's, Power Net's going to get lashed up to a tree. Try to delay Chill's death, but it's not going to be. It's not going to be enough. 394 crit coming out from the Brewmaster. Still doesn't have a solid build. I want to see what this guy's going. I want to. I want to see. I want to see, guys. Let me see. Cast Knight sitting at agility treads, and he's going to go for a Manta style. 
Or just Yasha. Interesting, interesting, interesting. It's not, uh, you don't... Uh, maybe that's actually Sanji Yasha? Uh, I don't know. Manta, you don't see all that often on Chaos Knight, although with that and Phantasm, you'll have a lot of people in the fight. But, uh, Ubalus does have quite a bit of AoE. But then again, Chaos Knight does have a heart, so... It might be the time for one of those. Shotgun combo going on to Sheep. Power Knight actually trying to bring Morphling onto the low ground, but it did not work. Sheep gonna get instantly taken out of the fight, and our man getting wailed upon by two heroes. Power Knight is gonna get Sheeped, and Frostbane is the Crystal Maiden Ultimate going, doing a huge amount of damage to the Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight is gonna take taken down. Lua is now getting right clicked down as well. Sitting in the Ice Wall, perfectly placed Ice Wall by our man. Lua is not moving anywhere at all. A little bit of casting coming out from the Lashak, but it's not gonna be enough to save his buddy. Lashak is now on the run, trying to deny himself to the Ancients. But Crystal Maiden picking up that last like click onto the Lashrak, and with the racks already in their favor, Ubalus could just slide onto the bot lane and take another pair of racks. Shadow Demon's the only one up, and he's now being chased by the Morphling Ethereal Blade. Adaptive Strike, boom, so much damage. Mantis Style as well, but Sunstrike, Kablammy onto the Shadow Demon's head. <laughs> so, complete team wipe by Ubalus, and they're just gonna go straight for the GG. With 23 seconds off in the track, uh, yeah, this is gonna be game, guys. The Hydra simply does not have any buybacks, and yeah, Chaos Knight unfortunately bought that Yasha. Not enough money to buy back, and with that powerful, powerful Morphling, they don't have enough. That's gonna be GG. Ubalus taking the game over Hydra. Very close game, very back and forth, but in the end, the Morphling able to pull out all the damage and just completely demolish the Hydra team and Brewmaster. Going his wonky builds wasn't able to quite deliver. So thanks for watching, guys. This has been my first live streams game. I actually am curious to see if I have any viewers, but hell, if, even if I don't, it's recorded anyway. So it's going to be on my YouTube channel, uh, YouTube.com/MikeLorisGaming. So thanks for watching, guys. As always, I appreciate comments, criticism, all that good jazz. So thanks for watching, guys. GG.